Hello, I'm William Pace. Tonight's show is on filmmaking. Filmmaking takes place outside of the mainstream and is commonly called independent filmmaking. Since the introduction of DV technology, the means of production have become more democratized and economically viable. Filmmakers can conceivably shoot and edit a film, create and edit the sound and music, and mix the final cut on a home computer. However, while the means of production may be democratized, financing, traditional distribution, and marketing remain difficult to accomplish outside the traditional system. In the past, most independent filmmakers have relied on film festivals to get their films noticed and sold for distribution and production. However, the internet has allowed for the relatively inexpensive distribution of independent films on websites such as YouTube. As a result, several companies have emerged to assist filmmakers in getting independent movies seen and sold via mainstream internet marketplaces, often adjacent to the popular Hollywood titles. Since internet movie distribution, independent filmmakers who choose to forego a traditional distribution deal now have the ability to reach global audiences. There's more to come on The William Pace Show. Stay with us. Good evening, I'm William Pace. Thanks so much for tuning us in tonight. My guest is Janine Phillips. You might remember her from being on the last show. She's an author here in Dayton, and she has a, a project. One of her books is going to be made into a film. So I invited her to be on the program tonight since our show is on film making. Thanks so much for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. So which book is going to be made into a film? Well, it would be actually a short story from short story. one of my books. It's At Wit's End is the name of the mm -hmm. book. And then Compound Fractures is the short story that's going to be put into a screenplay mm -hmm. and then hopefully will be filmed sometime okay. this year. Okay. So both books are com being condensed into one film project then? No, just one short story mm -hmm. from one. I have several short stories mm -hmm. in At Wit's End and At Wit's End 2. Mm -hmm. And uh, then that particular short story will be uh, put into that screenplay form. So At, wit at, at Wit's, wit's End. Wits in mm -hmm. two is going one one <laughs> has okay, the short so, story in it. <laughs> so which of the three ones are going to be the okay. project? That's so we well, know. at Wits End has several poetry, uh, mm -hmm. some poems, uh, narratives, and short stories. And the short story that's in there, Compound Fractures, is the name of okay. the short story. That's and what's being put into okay. screenplay for. And is that going to be the name of it? That is correct. That'll okay. be the name of the film. Okay, that's what we want to know. So. You know, now today, film making is becoming, uh, independent filmmaking is becoming more possible mm -hmm. because of the various um, development in technology and so forth. And many film producers are taking to uh, local festivals, mm -hmm. you know, to get their projects out there. Right. Um, do you think that uh, films, can ch can change the lives of people and help people to see themselves in a different uh, light. Absolutely, especially from the writing aspect of it, mm -hmm. um, that I'm able to write the things that come to mind and um, then also then being able to reach out to a wider audience, mm -hmm. especially uh, locally. Mm -hmm. So as far as the um, getting the uh, films into um, a larger audience with mm -hmm. social media and all of that. So mm -hmm. absolutely, it, it definitely can work with a wider audience. Mm -hmm. And there's such a, uh, an enormous um, area of different phases of producing film because you have the, the writing part of it, mm -hmm. you have the creative part of it, you have uh, translating it from from, are you really rewriting it from the from the book? Are you writing the, the script as well? well I'm, no, I'm actually having help with uh, the writing the screenplay, which would be mm -hmm. um, helping out as Tom Dallas. 
Mm -hmm. and he's also one of the local filmmakers mm -hmm. here and um, helping out he's going to show me how to do all of that and hopefully mm -hmm. it'll be something that I'll be able to um, mm -hmm. to learn as well mm -hmm. and then be, maybe diving into that as well mm -hmm. so with the the films I've helped out on mm -hmm. I've been a production manager production mm -hmm. assistant and also location scout. So that's actually mm -hmm. become very much of a challenge. It's really a big, big project because yes. there's so many components to film producing. Yes, you yes. Know, and uh, so when you're, say for example, scalping, uh, locating yeah. the perfect um, set, Right. what do you have in mind? Well, it, it just depends on the actual project itself. Mm -hmm. So uh, just scouting is just involved in reaching out to friends and family making lots of phone calls, emails, driving around looking for mm -hmm. the perfect place depending on the actual mm -hmm. project involved. Mm -hmm. So it could be an interior, an exterior, but mm -hmm. we have to secure that place, mm -hmm. get permission to do so, mm -hmm. and then um, hopefully move forward with actually mm -hmm. filming. Now, are you responsible when you're um, identifying the, the location, mm -hmm. are you responsible for the, the extras, the supers, the people that are standing around and um, all of that? No, I'm not responsible for that, mm -hmm. but um, definitely is involved in the project itself would be the filmmaker, mm -hmm. uh, the director, um, all of the other mm -hmm. actors, we just all reach out to each mm -hmm. other and then we start a um, so we're like social media chat mm -hmm. room so we can all keep in contact with oh, each other. Great, yeah. great. So everybody's on the same page. Absolutely. What do you like about the whole creative process of, of films, you know, from the writing part of it to the, the producing part of it to the, um, the whole uh, spectrum of it. What do you like about it most? Basically watching this creativity unfold mm -hmm. just right before your very eyes and looking at it from the director's standpoint. Mm -hmm. So you're filming from one direction, then you turn around and you film from an opposite direction. Mm -hmm. So then watching that uh, unfold mm -hmm. and then also then all of a sudden it becomes an actual film. So mm -hmm. that, I love all of it. The whole thing from the, the start thing. to the finish yes. because it is a, a process. Yes. Yes. You know, it starts with a thought, you know, yep. you know the, the writing part of it, you know, right. what's going to be an interesting story that people want to exactly. know about exactly. and, and, and that's going to hopefully inspire people, lift people up, mm -hmm. you know, encourage people. Right. I think that's what the real art of film is to, to do is to, mm -hmm. you know, help us to change our way of viewing things so that we have a, a greater understanding mm -hmm. in the process, you know. Uh, and I have found many films, so many of them, like Places in the Heart, you know. <laughs> I love the movies that uh, tell a story of, of someone overcoming something really yes. big, you yes. know, like Places in the Heart when she was so determined to save her farm, <laughs> exactly. you know, and you're just rooting for her to do it, you know. Right. And, um, you know, movies that tell a story and, and help you to change your whole perspective on things. Exactly. And help you to have maybe uh, a broader compassion, right. you know. It's, it's um, a, a very powerful medium, it really is. Very much so. Um, what I enjoy, I think, just um, seeing the actors and the actresses just portraying a whole new set of characters and, and involved in that. Mm -hmm. That's normally um, mm -hmm. where I'm not in front of the camera, mm -hmm. behind the scenes is, is where I prefer to be mm -hmm. and it's, so it's you, wonderful to watch. So you prefer behind the camera? Very yeah. much so. Okay. <laughs> and um, well they both are important. Yes. You know, what goes on in front of the camera and what goes on behind the camera you need, you know, you, it, you have to have them both to be able to to do the, 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 the film. Yes. Um, so do you have any particular actors have you have lined up to be in your film project yet? Not specifically. Mm -hmm. Where I'm working with uh, Eric Anderson who is the filmmaker and uh, he's the director and mm -hmm. we're kind of working together. So on the it. casting is yet to is, be determined. Is yet to be determined. I could always be an extra in the background. Okay. <laughs> or you have two creative children. You can have your, one of your, your children in it too. That right? is true. That is so. true. <laughs> well, thank you so much thank for coming on the program much. tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. There is more to come on the William Pace Show. Stay with us. You'll have the time, the time of your life. I saw a man. He danced with his wife. 
Good evening. Thanks so much for tuning us in. Our show tonight is on filmmaking, and my guest is Tom Dallas. Thank you so much for being on the program tonight. Well, thank you. Uh, tell me, how did you get started in uh, working in film? I've been uh, working uh, as an independent filmmaker and documentary filmmaker for about 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, it was just kind of a, actually, I, it was a church that I was attending at the time. Mm -hmm. Wanted to uh, make some studies uh, for um, uh, home study. And so I thought, well, let's put it to, to film. Let's make it like a, like a documentary. Mm -hmm. And that kind of got me interested in it. And uh, out of that, I started making um, documentary films and made about 30 since then, and then worked on uh, feature films and uh, script writing and all. Wonderful. So you started just by as a, as, a, as, as a hobby then, and then it just grew from that as an interest then. Correct. And so forth. Um, what do you think people are looking for uh, when they go to see films today? Are they, what are they paying attention to? Are they paying attention more to the storyline? Or what do you think? Well, I think for the most part, people go for entertainment. Uh -huh. uh, and it's the, it's the job of the filmmaker to entertain. Mm -hmm. uh, now I can come in a variety of, of forms mm -hmm. and everyone has a different genre of, of uh, entertainment that they prefer, science fiction, drama, mm -hmm. comedy. Uh, but they're still telling a story. Basically entertainment. And, and it's, right, and, and so we are there to entertain. Mm -hmm. Inspire, would you say? Oh, uh, well, hopefully that's yeah. what a good entertainment yeah. will do, you yeah, know. to lift people up. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, now, I know you have a project that's coming up soon, and uh, it's called Compound Fracture. So right. tell that's, me about that. That's a, um, a book that uh, Janine had, yes. uh, Janine Phillips had written, and I've written several scripts, and so she's asked me to help t transfer uh, that from a uh, book into a script mm -hmm. screenplay uh, mm -hmm. format. And so I'll be working on that. Well, what her. is the process taking it from a book to a screenplay? Well, when you write a novel, you know, you're, you're very descriptive. Mm -hmm. uh, but whenever you're writing a screenplay, not as much because uh, the director is bringing his art uh, or her mm -hmm. art into that uh, process. And so uh, you have to put more of an emphasis upon the dialogue and uh, mm -hmm. uh, think about things that, oh, especially in independent film, you also have to think within budget uh, constraints and, yes. and so forth. Yes. So the storyteller, when you're writing like a novel, so forth, taking it from the storytelling to actually dialoguing and conversation and things like that. So in that process of transferring from one format to another format of storytelling, then to actually two people dialoguing in, uh, in a f uh, film, is there a certain um, technique, certain tools you use to get from one to the other? Well, there are script writing tools. That's and, what I meant. And you learn how to, to write yeah. a script. Uh, a story is actually told at least three times in the process by the time the viewer watches it. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the person writing it, whether it's in a novel mm -hmm. and then uh, transformed into a script or a script writer who puts mm -hmm. it in a screenplay. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the first stage. And then you have the directing and putting it on the film itself mm -hmm. and that story. And there that's why you have a director mm -hmm. who uh, helps the actors to get the interpretation that uh, he or she as a director uh, sees for that project. Mm -hmm. And then final, the final storytelling of that is done through editing. Uh, and the okay. editors tell the story as well True. because there's so certain So you got several people telling oh, the yeah. story. So basically when you started from the, the novel or the book, you know, you got one person, but then the film, when it becomes a film project or screenplay, then you get many people telling the story. Uh, correct. Uh, uh, I always tell and I people... Guess I guess even the costume yes. person is telling the story through the period of the clothing and things. Yes. And the, even the, the set where it's all, and, and the time of set, you know, it's just so many people. So you, it sounds like you're having more storytellers or a, a collaboration yes. of storytellers. Well, I'm, a, I'm a, also a photographer. And as a photographer, mm -hmm. I can work independently and tell a story right. in my photography. A writer, I also write, mm -hmm. can tell a story. But when you put a film together, 
it's, it's a collaborative work of a group of individuals telling a story. Mm. Uh, and as you said, you know, it can be the set designer. It can be who's telling a story. It's mm. also the, uh, uh, the makeup artist mm. and uh, the wardrobe mm. uh, personnel. Every part of the crew, uh, they're helping with that story. To, and to everyone's story. important putting together, combining this, yeah. this story. Yeah, and that's where I that's why I like film because you have so many different collaborators, people yeah. contributing to it to make this unique art form art, you know. And um, but you know, as an independent film producer, um, it's becoming more the way to go about getting films uh, before the public. In other words, you know, many film writers find it easier just to work locally and get their projects in terms of film festivals and things like that. Mm -hmm. Isn't uh, just uh, here in Ohio, uh, when a, we have a film that's up for an Oscar, uh, yes. you know, about the, the, the Glasgow, uh, the factory, you know? And uh, so it seems to be more of a, uh, uh, a way of doing it nowadays as considering in the old days, where you just had to go to Hollywood and you had to be in one of the big studios and so forth. So do you believe that the way films are produced today has changed the whole dynamic of the industry? Well, it has. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we can now make films easily in Ohio mm -hmm as opposed to uh, Los Angeles, as you said. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the, still the major net, uh, or the, the networks or, or uh, uh, places of industry are gonna be uh, Los Angeles and mm -hmm. New York. And it used to be Chicago, but now mm -hmm. it's uh, Atlanta. Uh, and uh, other places are, are growing. Um, mm -hmm. Nashville, for example, has yeah. a strong film uh, yeah. community. And Ohio has really grown. Uh, mm -hmm. with that. And so uh, with different aids now through uh, editing and different types of cameras and things aren't actually shot on film, but are digitally made, uh, mm -hmm. people can, it's now more affordable uh, that individuals can make uh, films. Mm -hmm. And uh, so actors don't always have to be out in uh, Los Angeles, uh, mm -hmm. although that is still the number one market. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. I wanted to ask too, uh, would you come back after this project is completed? Oh yeah, I'd you love know, to. Compound Fractures. And when do you think that will be out? Uh, that I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, because we, once we take it and have it to script, then it goes to the, uh, um, to the director, uh, in this case, the, uh, Eric Andreessen, mm -hmm. and he will uh, film it and he'll schedule the mm -hmm. shooting and, and all of that. It's and then we have to have it edited after that. And that yes, can be a it's process. a process. It is. And it may take maybe a year or okay. sometimes I, I remember one movie set on the shelf. Uh, what was it? Uh, Blue Skies with Jessica Lange. Oh, yeah. It took two or three. It was sitting on the shelf. It had been filmed several years before and she got an Oscar for it. But it wasn't until the film was shot like five or six years before she got the Oscar before it was released. Mm -hmm. So it's a process and many films take, you know, uh, several years to complete. I can. Thank you so much for being on the program, uh, Tom. Uh, I would like for you to come back when uh, the project is complete and, um, and we'll show a preview of it. Okay, William, I appreciate it. Thank okay, you very thank much. Thank you so much. You have a thank good day. you. There's more to come on the William Pace Show. Stay with us. They do things that they don't do on Broadway. Good evening, I'm William Pace. Thanks so much for tuning us in. My next guest is Rusty Pexark. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, thanks so much for being on the program tonight. Good to see you. Yeah. Um, now, I want to talk about films, because you've very been working in film for a long time, since 1963. 63. Okay, just a few years ago. Um, how did you get started? My parents bought a home movie camera, and I took it out in the backyard, and I was moving little plastic dinosaurs around, and little, little Indians that I had painted up to look like cavemen, mm -hmm. and I sort of set the camera up and I animated the so things basically, moving around and I, that was my introduction to, to filmmaking. To film, like home movies and things yes. like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And from there, 
you started working on various projects and but you have been probably exposed to the various uh, formats of film. If you say you started in 1963, right. yeah. then you started with eight millimeter. Right. To eight nine. millimeter, and then in, in the late 60s, we switched over to what was called Super 8. In 73, I started attending Wright State, and my entire tenure there at Wright State was involved with, with editing and shooting Super 8 film. Mm -hmm. The late 70s and then got into the 80s, we switched over to video. We got into what we called the, the first portable video was called the Sony porta packs. Mm -hmm. You probably remember those. I do. We had I a do. big giant tape recorder I do. on our shoulder and we had a big camera with a big cord on it. Well, you know, I was just telling someone the other day in my life on the air over the last number of years, 30 years, has been on almost every format that you can imagine. In the early days when the show started, you know, it was like on a big um, one inch reel, which was like a big like encyclopedia. And I remember yeah. when the shows were sent to the station, they went out in this big box, you know, and now right. it's all done, you know, on a, um, in high definition and on a smaller format and you're sending things on, on uh, uh, DVD and so forth formats, yeah. and sometimes you can just upload it on the air and send it to them, you know? Yeah. So. Or doing, and then sound was the same way as, as the way video went from big two inch reels of, of yeah. film. Yeah. And, and then the early days of, of uh, Miami Valley Cable Council, everything was on something called a three quarter Umanic. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a, like a, a large, Think of a VHS cassette on steroids. It was a big <laughs> thing. It was three quarter inch tape, and you had to edit it offline, and it was it was interesting. But yeah. it's it's gone. We have come a long way. Yes, a long way from that down to a, something yeah. called an SD card. That is the size of a stamp. Yeah, and you could you could put an encyclopedia on one mm -hmm. of those now. So you're also involved in Film Dayton, right? Yes, uh, Lisa Grigsby is the, uh, the head of Film Dayton. We have meetings once a week, or once a month, at uh, Wiley's Comedy Club. Okay. And uh, basically it's a chance for, all, for people from all aspects of filmmaking, from writers, directors, editors, actors, sound people, to get together mm -hmm. and we did a, a show, we did a, a short uh, six part series that was called Freak Club back uh, several years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was just a collaboration between professionals and uh, people who had been in a little while to mm -hmm. people just starting out. And we put together a six part series at, from people who were, were involved with Film Dayton. Great. I understand that you're going to be doing the sound for the film Compound Fractures. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I've been working with uh, Eric and I'm working with Tom and mm -hmm. Janine for mm -hmm. quite a few years now. And that's a project that is soon to go to production. Yes. And uh, expected to come out sometime in the next year or so. Yep. And so forth. Right. And so have you, what do you like about working with the sound part of the sound, film? Sound, yeah, that's an interesting question because I've, I've mentioned that to other people before. Mm -hmm. I started out, I was doing well, PA work, just helping out wherever, mm -hmm. you know, moving things around. I sort of got into lighting. Mm -hmm. And then I, felt, I realized that when you go into lighting, you set up the lights, get everything all set, and then, okay, you can leave. You got to get out of the room before they can shoot the scene. Mm -hmm. I got into doing sound because along with doing home movies and things of that nature, I had the old real, real tape recorders, and I did a lot of recording with that. Learn, you know, playing guitar and singing stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I realized that if you do sound, you get to stay for everything. Mm. You have to stay for everything. Yeah. Get all the all the scenes. But you know, as as you listen to uh, uh, while you're viewing a film, you know, the audio, the sound plays such an important part. You know like the wind blowing in the background or mm -hmm. the car starting. You know, all of those, we were talking in the previous segment, 
that everyone involved in a film it tells a story right you know and that you know the people in the audio they're telling a story you know like if it's a, something that drops very softly you know if there's a mm -hmm. big boom you know and it all tells helps to tell the story yeah because you have just like us talking now they would be adding music they could mm -hmm. be adding, you know, sound effects. Mm -hmm. Our background here with the, the city of Dayton skyline, mm -hmm. you could have a little bit of the, mm -hmm. All the of sound tells, of the city. Yeah, it tells the story. It tells the story. Um, lastly, I want to ask you um, to tell us a little bit about, I want to get your opinion on this, okay. a little bit about what do you think, why people go to the movies? Why do they... You know, do they want to be trans, do they want to be inspired, entertain, uh, maybe come out with a greater mm -hmm. understanding of the world? What do you yes. think? <laughs> all of the above? All, all of the above. It depends, it depends on, the, on the genre. Uh, I think uh, earlier Tom had mentioned it's, it's entertainment, uh, like the Avengers series, entertainment, all the, the, uh, the superhero films, mm -hmm. uh, escapism. Just to get yeah. away from the, from, from the, the world, <laughs> the way the world is. Well, it's, you bring up an interesting point, you know. We talk about the economy and the problems of today, but you know, in every economic uh, depression, you know, there are people that thrive, and during the Great Depression, Hollywood thrived. They thrived, right. you know, because Every time people had a nickel, a dime, a quarter, they went to the movies. Right, right. They were trying to escape, you know? Right. So uh, that's a very interesting point, you know, Pe to escape, yeah. you know, from your existence into another world. Right. But, um, but mostly I think the reason I go to see films is to be lifted up. Mm -hmm. You know, I think about the movies, Places in the Heart, any movie that shows, you know, someone, the underdog, who has to overcome something, mm -hmm. you know, and they well, do yeah. it, you know. Well, we've just, got, we've just gotten through the, the Christmas season, and of course, everybody remembers It's a Wonderful Life. Oh, yeah, so yeah. So that, you know, that, that's the typical. And then yeah. the other side, I was going to bring up, uh, you mentioned it before, about uh, Julia Reichert and Steve Bogart's yes, yes. film about the up glass factory, Oscar. and they, they, again, just like the last film they did, The, the Last Truck, which got an Oscar nomination. Mm -hmm. They have an Oscar nomination for a American Factory. Maybe this is the year. I hope so. I'm rooting for them. <laughs> yes. Thanks so much for being on the show tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. There's more to come on the William Pace Show. Stay with us. Gotta go. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.